All right, guys, here we are with the Irate Gamer Show Season 5 Remastered. And this was a pretty big deal at the time because I was starting to dabble in HD. I got a new camera, new software, new computer, and I decided, you know what? I'm going to create an Irate Gamer universe because at the time, man, TV shows were awesome. There was, uh, you had shows like Dexter and True Blood, and then you had the whole cinematic Marvel universe coming together. So I was like, wow, I, I want to do something grandiose with the Irate Gamer show as well, since I am, you know, starting to dabble in HD and things like that. So I decided, yeah, this, this season, I'm gonna go balls to the wall with uh, recurring characters, just a huge story arc that continues from episode to episode, and it was a pretty ambitious season. The problem was, it was so ambitious, it took me four years to do this, this entire season and pull it together. And it got to the point where I was getting really fatigued with it, and rolling out episodes was pretty, it was a big chore. So a lot of times I'm like, eh, I'll just, I, I just kept putting it off and putting it off. And that's one of the reasons why it took so long for the whole story to come together. Now with these remastered episodes, one of the things that I tried to do was fix all the white balancing and timing issues because the first couple episodes, I was still trying to work with the new software, trying to figure out its bugs, what makes it tick and all that, all that gobbledygook. And you'll notice with the first one or two episodes, I was kind of using an inferior camera. This was a camera that I used. It was an HD camera before I uh, settled on the HD camera that I would go forward with, film the rest of the uh, season with. And this camera, it just, it was not good. So the first two episodes, you'll see that the quality is kind of subpar. So a little bit of growing pains. I tried to upscale these uh, episodes as best I could and fix all the white balancing. It's still a little problematic, but you know, I, I tried to do as best I could with with what I had. And uh, yeah, so a lot of white balancing issues corrected for this season. And like I said, timing issues. And uh, I, I think once we get to the He-Man episode, everything's kind of sorting itself out. I was not the best at white balancing and getting lighting back then, you know, that, that came in time. But uh, man, there are some really great episodes. Now, I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about the episodes individually because I, I have a making up documentary that is going to play at the very end, which I kind of divulge everything about those episodes anyway. But I have to say, probably one of my favorite episodes in this season has to be the X-Men episode. That just, when I watch it, it hits on all cylinders. I, I take out the X-Men one by one and just, it was a great episode, great jokes and timing and just, yeah, when I was watching it again as a filmmaker, I was like, wow, that's a pretty damn good episode. So <laughs> I just love when when that can come off that way to the person that, that created it, because it doesn't happen often. So yeah, there is a lot going on in this season. And one thing that, that you guys might not know is that one of the reasons I also went so grandiose was I was getting involved with a video game company that wanted to make a video game based off the Eric Gamer Show. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna create this universe and you can you can kind of pick and pull from it and make their your own game from it. And the game that we were trying to come up with was uh, like the Ninja Turtles arcade game. You'd have the different fighters like Tony and Chris and uh, Ronnie and just, kind of be the the Ninja Turtle like fighters fighting off all the different red robots, you know, kind of like the foot soldiers. And uh, I, you know, I kind of gave them this gaming company, the idea on a silver plate never materialized. I was so bummed about it, but uh, yeah, it's just one of those things that never came to fruition, which would have been cool if it did. But uh, yeah, aside from that, you know, even going back and watching these episodes again after so long, it was kind of neat because I remember watching this documentary on uh, the, the creators of South Park when they talked about when they had to do the multiple episodes. They kind of referred that experience in as, you know, just being a juggler where you're constantly juggling these balls and keeping them suspended in air long enough for one episode to the next. I'm like, after I started pulling off this episodic thing, I'm like, yeah, that's exactly how it is. You have to keep these balls, several balls in motion as you're bringing these plots 
and these plot points together. And once I got to the, the very end, which is the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers episode, yeah, I just all came together and just a bunch of payoffs, one after the other after another. And it was just such a, a joy for fans. And yeah, just an incredible experience. Of course, I will never do a long episodic format like this ever again because it just took so long to put together. And a lot of people have asked me over the years, are you ever going to do a movie? And I tell them, look, this was my movie. The, like even before James AVGN was even, even thought about doing a movie, you know, I threw out the first episode of this season arc and that was intended, you know, I was like, when this is to get all together, this is gonna be my movie. And I think the running time of this season is about an hour and a half. So yeah, it kind of fits into that, uh, that time frame of being the perfect Irate Gamer movie. So here we are, the season of the Irate Gamer movie. Master, wake up. I have good news to report. Ah, oh, yes, evil gamer, my loyal subject. Please enlighten me. Well, I'm happy to tell you that we're one step closer in finding the missing artifact. Ah, this is excellent news. I grow tired of waiting to be released from this mirrored prison. Evil Gamma, you know what you must do. <laughs> Alright, gaming gurus. What? You called me? Uh, I said gurus, not Goro. Oh, sorry, buddy. Ugh, my new neighbor. Anyways, today we're going to be looking at the 7-Up games. In the 1980s, 7-Up created a small mascot called Spot. And it wasn't long before this little guy received a video game of his own on the NES called Spot the Video Game. So, let's go ahead and check this one out. What the hell is this? This isn't a video game. In fact, it's more like a rehashed version of the board game Othello, which coincidentally enough they also made a video game out of. Boy, talk about a stupid idea. Picking up the board game would cost you three times less. But look, if you're gonna put the words video game in the title, I expect to see some side-scrolling action. Not garbage like this. Ugh. Shame on you for being in a game like this. So in Spot the Board Game, your goal is to have the most chips changed over to your color by the time the game is ended. And this is done by animated spots jumping, dancing, and pole vaulting across the screen in order to change all the surrounding chips after landing. And the player with the most chips at the end wins the game. This game also supports up to four players. So just break out the four player adapter, invite three of your friends over, and then challenge them to a battle of wits. This game is stupid. Now who the hell could that be? Yes? Ah, hello there my good man. Today we're giving away free pizzas in exchange for anyone who has a Magnavox Odyssey. Really? Well sweet, cause I just happen to have one right here. Ah, Magnifico, that'll do nicely. Well that is just... Hey, wait a minute. Ow! Evil Gamer? I should have known. Ah, enough of this charade. Now give me that Magnavox Odyssey before I pound you! <laughs> yeah right, pal. These things cost over a hundred bucks on eBay. So, get lost. Hey, don't you close that door on me! You get back out here and fight like a man, you overgoing piece of crap! What? What'd you call me? I... I... You... You... Dad... <sighs> Anyways, let's just move on to the second game called Spot the Cool Adventure. Yeah, now this is more like it. This was the kind of side-scrolling action I was talking about. 
but if you're also expecting a cool adventure like the title implies, you'll be quickly disappointed. Throughout the game, your player can only do two things. Pick up blocks to throw at enemies, and collect these little spot coins. I'm not even sure why we were even collecting these in the first place. Now if you happen to die at any point in the level, you'll have to go back and restart from the very beginning. Bummer. But if you think that's bad, on the third stage, I can't seem to get up here no matter what I do. You dumb fuck! Wow, this game really sucks. Oh, come on, grow up. The next 7-Up game to hit was called Cool Spot for both the Genesis and Super Nintendo. Now these games are almost identical to each other, but the Super Nintendo version was made with a few more levels, so we'll just go ahead and review that one. In this game, your mission is to travel around the level and collect these little spot coins until you've grabbed 30% of them. Once that happens, you'll be able to free the captured spot that's waiting for you at the end of the level. But trying to locate some of these coins are a major pain in the ass. So until they actually prove to do something useful like getting me laid, then to hell with them. Once you complete the level and release your friend, they'll then do an annoying dance of joy for you. Well, not you too. After that, it's then on to the bonus round, which takes place inside of a giant 7-Up bottle. The point here is to use the carbonation bubbles to climb higher and try to reach the very top because it's up here where you find these small letters that give you extra continues if you die. Collect all six, and you'll spell out the word Uncola. During the course of this game, you'll be searching for captured spots in all sorts of areas that only a mascot a few inches high can make an adventure out of. Behind walls, the river docks, a bathtub, a toy room, and don't even get me started on the nauseating train ride level. With the background flying off in one direction while you're traveling in the other, this just sets up the recipe for one bad case of vertigo. This game even has one of those annoying levels where if you accidentally fall off a ledge, you'll fall all the way back down to the beginning of the level, and you'll have to waste your time climbing all the way back up again. Why do game developers continue on making these stupid levels? I hate them, you hate them, everybody fucking hates them! So for God's sake, man, stop making them! Can I help you? Hey buddy, you hear the good news? They're giving away free Xboxes outside! Really? Aw, oh, sweet! Ha! <laughs> that was too easy. What a sucker. I don't see no Xboxes out here. Well, hi do there, neighbor! Hey, Wilkins. Hey, you see anyone giving away Xboxes out here? Hmm, nope. Can't say I have. That's weird. Why's there a teddy bear sitting here? <laughs> Sucker. What the hell? What just happened? Well, I think it's time for my medication. <sighs> Let's just get back to the game. Many stages later, we finally reached the last level of the game. So the only thing left to do now is to free the last spot and finish this game. Holy crap, could there be a more annoying mascot? Oh yeah! Cool, eh, man? Oh yeah! Can I please finish this review without any more interruptions? Oh, okay. And that goes for you too, buddy. Hmm. So after rescuing the last spot, it's time to sit back and enjoy our well-deserved ending. What the hell? Play the game on hard and collect all six Uncola letters? Son of a bitch! Oh no! Well fine, if that's what they're looking for, let's do this! Oh yeah! Alright, about damn time too, neighbor! Yeah! Alright, time to get down to business!
After meeting all the ridiculous requirements for getting the best ending possible, it's finally time to see what this grand prize really is. What the hell is this? Take a picture of the screen to send in for a prize? This game is over 15 years old! How the hell am I supposed to claim anything for finishing the game? You want cola, fuck! Ah, to hell with it. I'll just take a picture anyway. Any of you guys got a camera? Nope. Uh, nope. Uh, nope. 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 Hmm. My cell phone. All right. Well, let's try sending this bad boy in. Master, I did it. I have the Odyssey. Excellent. Now hook it up to the extraction machine. We need that artificial intelligence. My dominion is at hand! Rise, my evil minion! Hello, Dave. Yes, can I help you? Uh, yes, I have a package here for Chris the Irate Gamer. Oh, sweet, I've been waiting for this, thanks. Hey, buddy, that was a COD, he stole me 40 bucks. <sighs> I was talking. <laughs> All right, finally got my package from 7 Up. Now, time to see what this grand prize is. What the hell? box full of 7-Up games? No. No. No! Alright, Red. The last batch of Odyssey clones is finally finished. Now rise, evil cronies! Hello, Dave. Okay, looks like you're all online and operating properly. Uh, just go stand in line with the others. I'll go make my speech. Greetings, loyal subjects of the Shadow Lord's army. I am the one, the only, Evil Gamer. Thank you. So anyway, let me also introduce to you my lieutenant, your creator, the R.E.D. Which stands for the Robotic Electroman Device. Now let me be the first to welcome you into this newly formed army. And everyone here today will receive a tote bag. Alright, so uh, Red, if you would, please debrief the soldiers on our current mission, and I will go inform the big boss man of our current progress. Thank you, evil gamer. Now then, it's time for war. Welcome back to Days of Our Skeletons. Oh, Bonnie, say it isn't so! I'm sorry, Ronnie, but I love another! No, don't say it! Not my brother, Dirk! Bonjour, Ronald! I see you now know our secret! Oh, this is just devastating! Oh, oh man, I already saw this episode. Well, I guess we'll just do another game review then. Let's see, Rhaegar, Roger Rabbit, Robo... I think we found one. Robocop. That's a good one. Uh, who are you talking to? Hey, Tony, what are you doing here? Oh, I left my boxing gloves here the other day. So me and the wise sage here just stopped by to pick them up. Oh, well, they're actually in the hall closet there if you just want to help yourself. Oh, good. Because my loud neighbor needs a beatdown. 
Bang a lang. <laughs> Tony, tough guy to the end. He was actually the same way back in high school. Oh, hey guys. Hey. hey. Tony, why is your hand all bloody? I just beat the crap out of this new freshman. Yeah, and that dude had it coming, too. <coughs> Jeez, Eric, you've had that cough for two weeks now. I think you should really see a doctor. Nah, I'll be fine. And a week later, he was dead. Ah, well, enough reminiscing. Now it's time for some RoboCop. Ah, RoboCop. The officer gunned down in the line of duty and reborn as a robot cop. This was a popular movie in the 1980s. And, of course, as it goes, a video game adaption followed close behind. And we all know how those things turn out. Could it stack up to the movie? Well, let's find out. Now, RoboCop here turned out to be an okay adaption. We got a snazzy intro, and a first level that's, well, pretty straightforward. Fight through the streets of Detroit, and reach the end of the level. And on your way there, well, we let a Robo Fist do the talking. Although when starting the game, well, they don't give us a gun to fight with. Well, that's annoying. And as for the controls in this game, well, it does leave something left to be desired. Okay, so the A button punches, and the B button also punches? Okay, that's weird. But the select button does your block attack. Oh boy, and that's his block attack. Looks more like he's sneezing. Zoom tight. Now, which one is the jump button? Um, wait a minute. There's no fucking jump button? What kind of shit is this? So we get two punch buttons, and we can't jump or shoot? Who the hell designed this game? Boy, this has all the makings of being shit. So, of course, all that we can do here is punch the bad guys. Oh, and punch dogs. I'm sure PETA loves this. Well, no matter. Now it's time to... Did Robocop actually take his gun out during the middle of the level? Who designed this shit? These controls suck! Taking your gun out whenever the game feels it's appropriate? Well, newsflash, jerk off. Using it through the entire game is appropriate. Ugh, let's move on. Alright, so now that we have a gun to use, let's finally put this damn thing to use. Yeah, work out that aggression! Of course, once you actually get to use your gun, the amount of enemies coming at you just seems to increase. The odd thing is that I really can't get a good shot in at these enemies unless I kneel first and fire. And with these wonky controls, well, sometimes that's difficult to do. Talk about a pain in the ass. And this gets super repetitive, too. Forward, kneel, fire. Forward, kneel, fire. Forward, kneel, fire. Forward, kneel, fire. Forward, kneel, fire! Forward, kneel, fire. <laughs> the hell? Rob the robot? Yeah, that cool? I found them all broken in your closet and fixed them for you. Are you out of your mind? That thing tried to kill me before! So wait a minute. That's the robot that tried to kill you? He doesn't look so evil to me. I stand corrected. Ah, not to worry, guys. I reprogrammed him so he's one of the good guys now. You sure about that? Yep, positive. Really? Stay. Good robot. Okay, so towards the end of the first level, we come to a building labeled Data East, who, coincidentally enough, are the developers of this game. Nothing like a quick, shameless plug, right? Although I am concerned about how one of the guys jumps out its windows and tries to kill you. Makes you wonder what the hell kind of a workplace environment is going on in there. So after a level of beating up dogs, gun snafus, and fighting off Data East banditos, we arrive at the Stage 1 boss. Now, he's not really hard to kill if you remember how to sneeze, or, I mean, block. But if you did forget, then your ass will be beaten down. Now, I'm not sure how it's possible for a thug to hurt Robocop using only his fists, but somehow this asshole actually manages to do it. Well, let's just skip ahead to level two, where the first half of the level takes place in a dark alley at night. And it's here that all kinds of crazy stuff can happen, especially your bullets managing to kill bad guys without even actually touching them. Weird. But hell, I'll take it. I guess things are looking up after all. Killing off bad guys? Check. Killing off guys with flamethrowers? Check. Walk inside the courthouse with guys in pursuit, and Robocop puts away his gun? You dumbass. I guess I spoke too soon. 
Who the hell would put their gun away in that kind of a situation? So now I guess we can only gather that the mysterious fourth classified Robocop directive is to act like a retard. And speaking of fight, don't these bad guys kind of look like Flint from G.I. Joe? Same color, same beret, yo Joe! And these guys can be found everywhere too. The third level warehouse, the fourth level OCP building, and the, holy crap, the ED-209! And this guy does not go down with a fight either. Man, what a P.A.B., which stands for Punk Ass Bitch. Well, let's take him down! Hell yeah! Now if you manage to beat him, then of course he goes running back to his mama. Aw, oh, poor baby, go run back to your mama! <laughs> Whoa! Thanks, Rob! Huh. Might be useful to have this guy around after all. Kinda like having your own personal Robocop. Or should I say, Robocop? Hmm. Robocop? Robocop. Funny how that works out. Ah, well, let's get back to the game. Okay, now it's on to the fifth level. And it's here that we get to hunt down the ringleader of the bad guys. And it turns out to be the dad from that 70s show? Boy, I guess that guy gets around. Well, no matter. Time to blow his ass away. Alright! And hell, let's not stop there either! Time for the bonus round! Take that, Ashton Kutcher! Eat lead, Fez! Time to die, Mila! Ah, damn it! I just killed off the cutest one! Hey, didn't she used to date Macaulay Culkin? Oh, yeah. Well, good riddance. <laughs> Now it's time to storm into the 6th level with guns blazing. Of course, as soon as you enter into the building, Robocop puts his gun away AGAIN! Ugh, you metal-headed jackass. Just look at all the guys coming at me now! Once you reach the very end of this stage, we come up against another ED-209! Looks like we're gonna need some help with this one. Hey, Robocop! Go get him, kid! Yeah, take that, you metal-plated prick! Now once this monstrosity is destroyed, the game then... ends? So that's it? Six levels in the entire game? What kind of lazy shit is that? You know, it's bad enough you can't jump or use your gun at all times. But this? This is too much! See you again. See you again? Bullshit! You're lucky if I write you a fucking postcard! Rob? Do me a favor and destroy this game! Whoa, whoa, Chris, turn on the news! Something crazy's happening downtown! Really? For those of you just joining us, robots have appeared in the downtown area and are taking hostages. Ah! These creatures are considered dangerous. Hold. Hold. What the hell do you want? You are my prisoner. And if I refuse? Oh, you bastard. Whoa, guys. This doesn't look good. Not at all. Well, I do know one person who can clean up this mess. Robocop? Go get him, kid! Alright gamers, now it's time to take a look at RoboCop 2. Is it better than the first installment? Well, sure the hell can't be any worse. Alright, and already we're off to a great start, because in this game, we can jump. Now we're talking. So the point here is to find as many of these nuke pieces as you can, as well as taking out the bad guys along the way. Yeah, and shot him right in the ass too. Of course, once you reach the end of the level, the game tallies up your score, and it's time to advance to the next... What the hell? Whoa, 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 I failed? How the hell did that happen? And they don't even tell you what you did wrong either. Great, now I'm sent back to the beginning of the game. 
Okay, let's try this again. Grab this piece, grab that piece, smack this guy around a bit, BAM! Through the magic of video editing, we're back at the end again in no time flat. Now let's see what happens. I fell again, you piece of shit! Great, now I gotta start from the beginning again. Well that's it, time to montage this bitch! Alright, ten tries later, see what happens. Hot damn, proceed to firing range! Finally we get to see another level in this stupid game. Alright, so here we are in the shooting gallery, and you're only supposed to fire on the people holding a gun. Shoot anything else, and it'll count against you. Alright, now fire! Fire! Rabble, rabble, fire! Okay, so after finishing out the level, I managed to get all but two of them. But no matter, I'll just try again. What the hell? They send you back to the beginning again? Why those mother and shove it straight up there? How the hell is anybody supposed to defeat this game if they keep sending you back to the first level? You die, you start at the beginning of the game. Fail your mission, start at the beginning of the game. Fail the second level, return to the beginning of the game. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if dying at any point in this game makes you return to the beginning of it. What a bunch of fecal flingy bullshit! Robocop will try again? Not on my watch, you won't! <sighs> well, let's just hope Rob the Robot's having better luck than I am. Hulk, you are my prisoner. Hulk, you are my prisoner. Hulk, you are my prisoner. Hi, I'm Joey. What's your name? Uh, you are my prisoner. <laughs> You're funny. Let's play. Hey, that was... Awesome! Do it again! Do it again! Where are you going? Come on! Come on! Alrighty, now let's take a look at Robocop 3. And interestingly enough, this turns out to be the best of the Robocop games. Now you won't be encountering all that crap that pissed you off in the first two games. Instead, the only thing that'll probably drive you nuts here is having to shoot the enemies three or four times before they actually die. And come on now, once isn't enough? Robocop is half man, half robot. This is an amateur hour here. If he shoots you, I guarantee your ass is going down. <laughs> Enough said. Although, on the plus side, there's this cool level where you get to fly around on the jetpack. Look at him go! Once you reach the end of this stage and kill off the ending boss, you get the pleasure of heading back the way you came. Ah, no matter. I'll just jetpack over all this stuff and... Where the hell's my jetpack? This piece of shit game takes your jetpack away on the return trip! And now you gotta try your best to jump over these giant holes that you could so easily fly over before. Okay, let's give this a running start. And upon trying this again... Uh, not for crying out loud, could this game get any worse? Ah, son of a bitch! Damn robots, can't rely on them for anything. What was that? Oh, I wasn't talking about you, Megatron. Oh, well just checking you, incident worm! Now all jokes aside, this game really isn't too bad. And during certain points of the game, you can even upgrade your body armor. Yeah, time to pimp out your Robocop! I wonder if I can purchase hydraulics. Look at him go! Nice. You know what? 
I'm surprised Robocop isn't back yet. You think something happened to him? Nah, I'm sure he's fine. He's probably on his way back home right now. Hey! You stupid little robot. Do you realize what you just did? You destroyed all our minions! Now listen here, you work for me, not him. So get your robotic butt over here so I can reprogram you. Oh, I hate robots. <laughs> Who the heck could that be? Can I help you? Ah, uh, you are the irate gamer. I have traveled many miles to give this to you, the chosen one. Uh, thanks. Sort of inferno. Well, that was weird. Hey Rob, check out this new sword I got. You know what? Kind of inspires me to review something old school. Something like... He-Man for the Atari. Ah, He-Man. Based on the toys that boys growing up in the early 1980s were all crazy about. So in this game, you fly around in your airship. And of course, while you're flying around, the bad guys down below will be trying their best to throw all their garbage at you. So while dodging all these annoying objects, your mission is to head towards the right hand side of the screen until this number here drops down to zero. And let's just see what happens here when it does. That shouldn't take too long. Crying out loud, I'll be here all damn week! So after a few days trying to beat this stage, we finally come to the castle of Grayskull. Ah, uh, finally! Once inside, your task is to reach the other side without touching these pillars, Skeletor's lasers, and well, just don't touch a damn thing here. Oh, come on! Son of a bitch. Looks like I need help for this one. Well, here goes nothing. By the power of Inferno! I have the power! Alright, BattleBot, let's try this again. Hot damn, I made it! So after reaching the other side, you'll win the game and be treated to a He-Man cutscene. Boy, that was worth wasting my time with. Lame. Well, BattleBot, have at it. Well, next up is a He-Man game for the Intellivision. And just like before, the first part of the game requires you to fly around dodging objects while heading off towards the right-hand side of the screen. The only major difference here is that Skeletor is now running across the bottom of the screen. Now I'm not even sure what purpose this serves, other than trying to distract you from the main objective. I regret nothing! Damn Skeletor. So after finishing this stage, we come to another area where you have to reach Skeletor, who is standing on the other side. The only problem is, you'll be busy dodging this shit storm of, well, shit. Reach the other side, and you'll have a quick sword fight with Skeletor, causing him to run off and repeat this process all over again. Why, that skeletal pansy ass! Stand down, BattleBot! This one's mine! So after navigating through Skeletor's shitstorm once more, you'll be chasing him off yet again, and right into the halls of Castle Grayskull? How dare you defile the sanctity of that place! This time, Skeletor holds nothing back as he damn near throws everything at you. I regret nothing! Now in all three areas here, you'll be operating on the same countdown clock. 
and if you can't reach the end of this stage before it reaches zero, then a tornado will come by and return you to the beginning of the game. Uh, I said a tornado will come by and return you to the beginning of the game. Ah, oh, for crying out loud. Finally! But if time is not your issue here, then you'll be able to reach old Skeletor and chase him out of the castle. And the game starts all over again. I've had enough of this one. Time to show this game the door. Well, it's been done. The Sword of Inferno has been given to the Chosen One. Excellent. It won't be long now until he masters the power of Inferno. And hopefully, it'll be enough to stop the Shadow Overlord. Oh, oh, hey Chris, what's with the red shirt? Why, if it isn't my arch nemesis, Skeletor. Uh, Skeletor what? Welcome to the Evening News, I'm Johnny Newscaster. Well, our fair city is still reeling from the events of the robot invasion, and the one who orchestrated the entire event is here with us today. And he's the one, the only, Evil Gamer. Ah, thank you, Johnny. Evil, tell us, why destroy our beautiful city? Well, simply put, we're trying to take over the world. And if you think our reign of terror is at an end, then you're sadly mistaken. Excellent. Well, also joining us is the Jack of All Trades, Tony Rockenheimer. What are your thoughts on all this, Tony? Ah, thank you, Johnny. Let me just say that, Evil Gamer, you cause any more problems for us again, we're coming after you. Bang a lang. Ha, <laughs> empty threats. All right, now joining us is the Prince of Darkness himself, Satan. Satan, what do you have to say about all this? Destroying the city with robots? It's a shame I didn't think of it first. Why, in all my years of toiling away at masterminding... Ooh, my souffle is done. All right, well, also joining us on the panel is Irate Gamer. What? Irate, uh, what do you have to say about this? Uh, actually nothing. I'm about to review another game here. Oh, well, that's unfortunate since I have 25 more minutes to fill in this program. Well, um, anybody know any show tunes? Oh, yeah. All right, gamers, today we're going to be checking out Silver Surfer for the NES. Now, I know this game has been reviewed before, but my intent is to make it all the way to the end. Now, if anybody out there has a problem with that, then I suggest you just click over to another channel. Hey, what the hell do you think you're doing? Turn that back! Whew, alright, that's better. Alright, well, the game starts off by Galactus telling Silver Surfer that he needs his help defending the universe from a huge threat. And once arriving at the startup screen, we get to choose from five different areas. You know, this stage selection screen kind of reminds me of Mega Man. You've got your Water World, Space World, and Ghost World. Wait a minute. This is exactly like Mega Man. You Mega Man ripoff! Alright, well, if we're going to have to pick one, let's just go ahead and pick this Bret Hart stage. So in this side-scrolling adventure, you're Me- Uh, let's try this again. So in this side-scrolling adventure, your mission is to reach the end and... Gosh damn it! <sighs> now in this side-scrolling adventure, your mi- <sighs> And the game is over? No save feature? One hit and you're dead? Ah! From the very first second, these stages will be out to kill your ass in every way possible. Now some games require a bit of memorization just to pass through them but this game pretty much grabs your spine and pulls it right out your asshole. Now just how the hell am I supposed to get past this? Good God, is there anything harder than this game? Couldn't they have at least given us a health meter? Power mushrooms? Something? Anything! Now oh, son of a bitch! Now thankfully this game has a lot of checkpoints throughout the level, but good fucking luck reaching them. When trying to deal with shit like this, where the game gives you the space as big as your ass crack to pass through. Ugh. God, this game sucks, it blows, and it's a piece of shit! Okay, well, maybe we can just pause the game and chart a path to victory. Well, we'll navigate around this bullet, around this, around that, and head this way to free ourselves for the next line of attack. Well, 
Here goes nothing. Ah! <sighs> well, time to break out the NES Advantage. This oversized controller thankfully has turbo buttons and a slow button that will help slow things down a bit. Now this might sound like a good idea on paper, and you probably would get a little bit further than you would normally. But good luck from here on out, because the only thing you'll be doing is watching your ass getting kicked in slow motion. And if you think the controls in this game are any better, guess again. Because once you start finding power-ups to add to your arsenal, it becomes another complicated mess just to use them. Now the A button will fire your standard weapon, but the B button doesn't do diddly fuck. But you know what does fire your power-up weapon? The select button. The select button? For God's sake, you have a perfectly good button right here that does absolutely shit, and you want me to use the select button to fire? Ugh. Who the hell designed this shit? Pablo Picasso? Why, yes. Fuck off! You know nothing of my book! Ah, but what the hell does it even matter anyway? Since you probably won't be alive long enough to even use it. Gosh damn it, I want to see the rest of this game! Don't you? Well, I hate to do this, but time to break out the game, Genie. All right, Genie, come out of there! <laughs> You've released the almighty game, Genie. Hey, you look a little different from last time. Well, being locked away in that thing for a while will do that to you. Plus, if Doctor Who can do it, I can do it too. All righty, so, how may I serve you? Oh, great. Well, I need infinite lives. Very well, I think I can do that. Uh, not me, jackass. The game. Oh. <laughs> uh. Oh, boy. Yeah, now we're talking untouchable. Now, each level in this game is split up into three sections. Two full-size levels and a third that contains the stage boss. The bad news here is that it takes a billion shots just to kill him. And the good news? Well, there's no good news. This is a Silver Surfer game, jackass. This is a game where you can still lose even after beating the stage boss. Oh, you flip my shit. So after you successfully defeat a stage boss, we get a device piece and the Silver Surfer celebrates. Well, don't party too hard there, Silver Man. We got four more of these stupid hard as shit levels to beat. <sighs> And even with a Game Genie helping you, you'll be subjected to a countless barrage of death after death after death after death after death before finally reaching all these stage bosses. Now once you finally manage to defeat all five levels, you'll then be whisked away to the final level to battle the main villain of this game. And just who is waiting for you in this final stage, you ask? Well, it's none other than Mr. Sinister, a villain from X-Men? Ugh, oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. I mean, seriously, what in God's name is the damn point of even making this poor pathetic excuse for a game? The game is way too hard, the controls suck, and to top it off, you don't even get to fight the main villain in this game. What? Because once you reach the end, you just end up fighting some bloated shithead. What the hell? Pixel Demon? What the hell is that? The Pixel Demon? What? What? What the hell's a pixel demon? Irate Gamer. You again? You must use the Inferno Force. The Inferno Force? But I haven't even mastered it yet. You must at least try. The game was made to be impossible to defeat, so that monster will be locked away forever. And if he is released, then we'll all be in grave danger. Alright, well, here goes nothing. I call upon the Inferno Force! That's it, you're doing it! Alright, let's do this!
Wanna bet? Master, wake up. I have good news. Ah, evil gamer. What news do you bring? Just wanted to inform you that our master plan is ready for execution. Excellent. And once set in motion, the world will finally feel the name Shadow Overload. Oh, how evilly delightful. Go now, and don't fail me again. As you wish. Stupid Silver Surfer. What a poor excuse for a game. <laughs> well, since I'm on a Marvel Comics kick, let's check out, um, well, Uncanny X-Men. Aside from being one of my favorite comic book titles, X-Men finally comes to life on the NES. And at the startup screen, we get five levels to choose from. I don't need no stinking training level. Let's just get to the main course. After picking your level, it's now time to play as one of these six X-Men. Cyclops! Wolverine! Nightcrawler! Colossus! Iceman! And Storm! Oh, to hell with you all! And each one has their own special ability in the game. Cyclops has laser blasts, Iceman shoots ice cubes, Storm uses lightning, Wolverine smashes bad guys, and dies. Alright, now wait a minute. Wolverine smashes up bad guys, and dies again? What's up with this weak-ass punching shit? Wolverine is supposed to be a badass, but in this game, he's a damn pushover. Hey, I resemble that remark, bub. Quiet, you. Whoa! <sighs> Anyone else have a problem? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Just what the hell is going on here? How the hell do you drop the ball in turning the most popular X-Man into a weenie who gets bitch slapped around? Blasphemy. You can even say the same thing about Colossus. Uh-oh. All he has is a short-range punch attack. Worthless. And just what the hell is up with his appearance? I didn't know I was playing as fucking Captain Planet. Duh, so depressing. And last, of course, we have Nightcrawler, another punching asshole. And in this game, he doesn't even teleport like he does in the comic. I mean, why the hell... Wait a minute. What the... Did he just walk through that wall? Nightcrawler doesn't walk through walls. <laughs> That's the mutant power of Kitty Pride, not Nightcrawler. Oh, yeah. Jesus, criminy. How the hell do you screw something like that up? That's like taking a shit in your brownie mix. Did they even read the source material here? What's next? Making Storm a white chick? Will you just leave me alone? Where the hell's the quality control in this shit? Man, now I'm all worked up. I need something to drink. You there. Go give me something to drink. Oh my god. Fine. Here. Yeah, here's some Volta. Alright, now we're talking. Hey, you forgot the ice, you moron! <laughs> Iceman, top this off for me. <sighs> Fine. <clears throat> All right. Refreshing. Now, if you think the character design is bad, just wait because that was just an omen for just how explosive this diarrhea is going to get. In each stage, you'll be warping around the level in order to find these hidden keys. Sounds easy enough, but good lord, I dare anyone to last more than five minutes in this game and expect to get as far as the front door. Literally. Even a door can kill you? What the- <laughs> Yep, you'll be fighting off more enemies than you can handle. But fear not, because this game does try to help out 
by taking over as the second player when one is not assisting you. Yes, and it will try all day because it fails miserably. Oh, jackass, I'm over here! Uh, over here? Oh, come on! Between the retarded AI in this game and the way enemies respawn wherever the hell they feel like, how's this game even enjoyable? Damn it, now what the fuck are you doing? Great, now you got me killed, you moron! Time for a Game Genie? Damn straight! Game Genie? I am the almighty Game Genie! You summoned me? I sure did. I have a hard game here, so do your thing. You got it! What the... What the hell is this? Oh, whoops. <laughs> Wrong code. Alrighty, let's do this. <sighs> Every time with this guy. So once you're able to live long enough to find all the keys necessary to advance in the game, it's now time to face the stage boss. And who the hell's this douchebag? Boomerang Man? Now we're making up X-Men villains? How about giving me an actual X-Men villain to fight from the comics, like Mr. Sinister? Oh wait, he can't because he's off in the Silver Surfer game making special fucking appearances. Now before you can ask how this shit can get any worse, it actually does. And I'll just show you how by beating the level here. Find the stage boss, warp back to the first screen, and run back to the starting point before this timer runs out. Whoa, whoa, now wait a minute. You don't have to kill the stage boss to advance in the game? In what game do you know you don't have to kill the stage boss to pass the level? Boy, this game sucks. So at this point in the game, you'll be living the same nightmare over and over again in every level. And you'll be repeatedly subjected to getting your ass kicked over and over again, run away from stage bosses, and collect more keys. Oh, except for on level 2. No keys needed to reach this boss, because we're gonna make this fucked up experience of a game complete. So now we reach the final boss, the White Queen Emma Frost. Now why the hell is she morphing into X-Men characters? Son of a bitch! That's a mutant ability of Mystique! Not Emma Frost! <sighs> Why can't anyone get this shit straight around here? Nightcrawler does not walk through walls. Emma Frost does not change her appearance. And when I fight against enemies that look like Gleep, I expect to be playing a damn Herculoids game. Yep, that's right. I went old school for that joke. Alright, well, let me just beat this thing so I can be done with this game. And then all we get is a text-based ending. After only playing through four levels of puke, I wouldn't even barf into a bag. Uh, actually there are five levels. No, there are four. Plus that stupid training level thing. Actually, after defeating all four levels, there's a secret level that opens up if you press select, B, and up, and then press start. Let me try this. The power of Inferno! <laughs> now, now calm down. Hey, neighbor, you have a cup of sugar I could. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Whew, boy, I feel better. Iceman, need a refill. You gotta be kidding me. You can't defeat the game unless you have a secret code? And just where am I supposed to obtain this little piece of information exactly? Somewhere in the game? In the instruction manual? My ass? Between my couch cushions? Hey, I've been looking for this! Joey?! <laughs> uh oh. Who the hell makes a game and has a final level that can only be unlocked with a code that's not even found in the game? Well, it could be considered a cool easter egg. <laughs> so in a secret level that only two people in the entire universe will ever get to actually play in, you'll be treated with all these annoying mazes that end up giving you vertigo, as well as respawning enemy situations that are way out of control. So at last we arrive face to face with the last boss, Magneto. And at this point in the game I could really give a rat's ass because this game is so fucked up that beating it has lost all meaning. 
And of course, once you beat the game, all you get is another text-based ending. Oh, how I hate the... Let me count the ways. One fucking billion! Oh, my head. Where the hell do these keep coming from? Alright, diagnostics seem to be in check. I concur. Alright, let's power this thing up. Agreed. Hello, Dave. Time to get evil. <laughs> Oh, hey gamers. Well, as you know, a new Die Hard movie is coming out soon. So, I thought I'd check out the old NES version. Can't go wrong with a little John McClane action, right? Thanks, Rob. You're a real pal. Ah, yes, Die Hard. Based on the popular movie in the 1980s. So upon starting, we randomly find ourselves on the 32nd floor. Which is confusing since the game doesn't even tell us how we even got here in the first place. So if you did happen to watch this R-rated movie as a kid, which probably wouldn't have happened, then you'll know your mission is to save the hostages on the 30th floor. Sounds easy, right? Yeah, good luck with that, buddy. Because you'll be encountering a barrage of bullets at every turn. Ugh, are they serious with this shit? I just lost four health bars trying to kill this guy. Why do I have this feeling that this game is going to flip my shit later in this review? Now pressing the start button will bring up a menu that shows you how many guys are left to kill in this game. Now once you manage to get this counter down to three, you can then go save the hostages. Now oh, there we go. Of course to make matters worse, they made this game so you can't see around walls, and most of the battles in this game become all out bloodbaths. What the hell is up with this bullet bullshit? Well mother- Fuck! Okay, let's try this again. Now, killing the bad guy sometimes lets you pick up this radio, which allows you to listen in on their communications. And bringing up the start menu will help you keep tabs on their progress of how many locks are left to break open on the safe they're trying to crack. And we can't have that happening, or else we'll lose the game. No! But just calm down, because that hasn't happened yet. Oh. Well, good. Well, let's just go to the elevator and see what we got here. Oh, there's a 30th floor. Ah, well, it was worth a shot. Let's just pick, uh, floor 33. So again, we wander into this gang of bad guys spraying bullets in every damn direction. Heh <laughs> dropping like flies. Uh-oh, I'm out of ammo. Come on, fists, do your thing. Oh, you fucking bullets! Oh, you fucking fists! Ah, I'm fucking dead! And there goes my counter. Fuck! So after starting over yet again, and getting back to where we were with a full round of ammo this time, we leave behind, well, quite a wake of destruction. Dead guys, broken glass, and alright, only 25 guys left to kill. So now we head on over to the, uh, well, well, look who just came over the radio. Yeah, Fritz, get your ass up here so I can kill you. Alright. Now it's on to the 34th floor. And big surprise, another round of bad guys. But for John McClane, nothing's impossible. Yeah! 19 dudes left? Suck it! Well, there's not much left to do on this floor. Time to... Oh, great. More reinforcements. Oh, sneaky bastard! Almost killed me! Well, I guess I should try to find some first aid juice. Any in here? How about here? Hmm... Oh my god, I did not just fall out that window! No! Ah, shit! Ugh, after restarting and making our way to the 35th floor, we find a map to the 5th floor, a key that opens a door to the roof, some C4 explosives, and a rocket for a rocket launcher? Am I really supposed to believe that this thing is just laying out in the open? 
Yeah. Well, since we have a radio, it's time to head to the roof and call the police. And now we have Carl Winslow helping out to save the hostages from the evil Professor Snape before John McClane starts seeing dead people. Boy, this is some serious shit. Now, throughout the game, Carl will be breaking in from time to time to tell you exactly where to find more enemies. Thank you, Carl. Much appreciated. Now it's time to climb into the air ducts and wander around a little bit until we find this secret computer. Uh, I'm a little busy here, Carl. Once popping out of these air ducts, it's time to make these enemies die hard! Oh yeah, and that body count is piling up! Er, I mean, down. Now we arrive at the elevator that will take us down to this mysterious fourth floor. Uh, okay, enough already, Carl. So once you find the rocket launcher on the fourth floor, it's time to pull out the map for the fifth floor. Wait a minute, this map is for the fifth floor? Well, there's just one little problem here. Out of the seven playable floors in this game, there is no fifth floor! What the shit?! This is like taking a shit in your Lucky Charms and calling it a marshmallow! You mean to tell me they couldn't get this right? What a piece of shit! Well, that kind of makes up for it. Keep going. Alright, fine, you want to be back. So anyways, we'll just consult the map to floor whatever the fuck this floor is to help us figure out where we should fire off this rocket launcher. Ready? Aim! Fire! Whoa! Oh, you suck! Ooh, Penny! Man, that packs one hell of a punch. Plus, doing this puts more time on the bad guy's clock, so it gives us a better chance of hunting down these bad guys before the counter runs out. Alright, well, let's get the hell out of here before... Oh, for crying out loud, Carl! I'm taking this radio and throwing it out the damn window! Now we arrive on floor 31. And if you kill the bad guys here, they'll end up dropping this detonator. Oh, wait a minute. Got a text. Damn it, Carl! Just leave me alone! Hmm. After that, it's now time to... Hello? Looks like they're sending in the cavalry again. Well, come on, Carl. Get over here and do your worst. Again? Not you, Carl. The other Carl! Get off this line! <sighs> so after disposing of the bad guy, Carl, it's time to find the remaining bad guys. Once you manage to get this counter down to three, the game now lets you head down to floor number 30. All right, nothing can stop me now. Did I just drop a C4 explosive? Oh god, no! No! I was so close! Damn you piece of... <sighs> well, if you didn't manage to blow your ass up accidentally like I just did, then you can head your happy ass back down to floor 30 to find the main boss of this game. Ah, uh, last we meet. You be kaye, motherfuck! Damn it, Carl! I'm gonna kick your ass! So now the game is won, and Carl, of course, steals the spotlight. Great. yippee ki -yay, that, bitch! Damn it, Carl, I'm trying to go to the bathroom here. Well, as you know, the new G.I. Joe movie has been released, so I think it's high time to check out the G.I. Joe video game for the NES. Let's check it out! And we learned from the game's intro that Cobra Command is up to no good yet again, and now it's time for you to create a team of G.I. Joes to infiltrate their base. But what the hell kind of a character roster is this? Blizzard? Gridiron? Rock and Roll? I'm not exactly top tier characters here. What the hell's people like Roadblock or Shipwreck? And picking Blizzard over Snow Job? I wonder if this has something to do with his name sounding very close to the word blow job. And remember, kids, saying bad words is never cool and can get you in trouble with your parents. And knowing is half the battle. Damn it, Flint! Get the hell out of here! <laughs>
Anyways, the first mission dumps us off in this jungle, and good luck with all the bad guys, because this game turns out to be one hell of a slaughter fest. Good lord, time to get down to business here. So if you think you're gonna turn on this game and just play through these levels, just keep dreaming, because Cobra Command turns out to be a powerhouse of epic proportions. Even with the stage boss being a fighter jet, how the hell is this even fair? Shit! Of course, once you die, the stupid range viper here just sits there and mocks me. Think you're so awesome with your cool pose and your flaming background? Well, I can get one of those too, buddy! And you probably use that big airplane to make up for your small penis. Yeah, that's right. I went there, bitch. Oh, damn it. Let's try this again. So anyway, after playing this game for a while, I think I'm starting to see a pattern here. Fighter Jet versus Joe, Fighter Jet kills Joe, and if Joe kills Fighter Jet, another Fighter Jet takes the place of the old Fighter Jet? Good lord, this is some first stage here, buddy! At this point, do I really want to know what's waiting for me in stage two? Well, I'm glad you asked. But I didn't ask. Well, too bad, asshole. What?! Because in this area, you get to run around and collect these detonator devices. Find all of them, and you can enter into this door that brings you to the stage boss. And just who the hell is this? Vulture Man? Are you kidding me with this? G.I. Joe has some of the most memorable bad guys in cartoon history. Zartan, Serpentor, the Baroness, and we're stuck with Raptor Man? Who the hell's a stupid prick who designed this game? Well, that would be me. And just because I don't like you, here's one more in your ass. So after defeating this stupid range viper at the end of stage 3, the jungle base then explodes. Good lord. And your mission is complete. Now it's on to Antarctica, so everybody except for Blizzard can freeze their balls off in this sub-zero temperature. Toasty! Everything here goes off hunky-dorky until reaching this stage boss. And it's another damn airplane. For crying out loud, how many bullets do I have to pump into this fucker? Oh great, now I'm out of ammo. So now it comes down to me punching this airplane like a damned idiot. And it works? So let me get this straight. Bullets don't defeat the airplane, but punching it does? So now we come to another detonator hide-and-go shit game. You just gotta love these jumping from ledge to ledge areas. Damn it! Ugh! Those respawning dicks! Finally! So now we can grab this detonator, run back over here, and uh... Oh, not this shit again! Could this game get any worse? Uh, now how the hell am I supposed to get out of here? Can I punch my way out? Stab my way out? Crouching tiger hidden dragging my way out? Ugh. Oh my god, I curse you in all the name that is unholy, you stupid piece of fu- All I had to do was grenade the floor? But if you think that's bad, just wait till you get to this cluster fuckstein of a stage. Not only do you have to navigate ledges that are moving in different directions, but you also have to avoid these guys. All right, we can get through this. Ah! Ah! Oh, I've had it! How to password my way around this shit. So now we come to level three and head down into the sewers Ninja Turtle style. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of one of the stages out of the Simpsons arcade game. Eh, probably one of those strange coincidences. Of course, once you reach level 4, it does look exactly like a level from the game Contra. Alright, now what the hell's going on here? This looks dead on! Even level 5 looks exactly like the desert level in Super Mario 2! Alright, I'm joking about the last one. But this airplane does follow you around like Lakitu does. Yeah, Mario, you see this shit? Mamma mia! I know, what a turd burglar! 
But that's not the end of this insanity, because also in this game, we get to climb walls like Spider-Man, fight killer subways, and get to face off against super villains like Road Pig. Road Pig? Who the fuck is Road Pig? This is actually the best we could do here? In fact, the only two bosses in this entire game that actually deserve to be here are Destro and Cobra Commander. Putting the rest of these idiots in this game makes as much sense as, uh, well, yeah, that. So if you can manage to put up with 18 levels of lackluster levels, you then get congratulated on defeating this game, and told to go on to our second quest. Well forget it buddy, I'm done putting up with your crap. So if you see this game just sitting out somewhere, destroy it as fast as humanly possible. Because knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! Well, the release of the new Star Trek movie is upon us, and I feel it's a great time to check out the game Star Trek for the NES. How's that sound, Rob? Alright, let's do this. And upon starting, we're treated with a long-winded explanation of how the Starship Enterprise is hit with an anomaly that throws them light years off course. As other crew members start chiming into this narrative, you'll notice that everyone from the show is here. Bones, Scotty, Chekhov, Sulu, Spock, Uhura, Lieutenant Drunkard, they're all here. Woo! Enterprise! Woo! Woo! Hey, what's a guy have to do around here to get another beer? Now it's time for us to beam down to the planet's surface and investigate. First we'll collect some flower samples, and then wander into this primitive village. Uh, maybe this isn't such a good idea. Even talking to the locals showcases how hostile this planet really is. Deadly spirits, bloodworms, beasts from the swamp. I think I'll just stay here and scan these cats. Uh, or not. Well, at least a trip to the local village shaman gives us protection against these bloodworms. I just wonder what's in these other huts. Who let this guy in here? So now we make our way into the swamplands, and it's here that we meet up with a deadly beast. Fire! <laughs> and I just stunned him? How the hell with that, set these phasers to massacre these bitches! Yeah, take that! Starfleet wouldn't tolerate this? These animals are attacking us at every turn, and you just want me to leave them alone? And great, now they just killed you. Eat your own words, you Vulcan pansy ass! Well, at least I'm still alive. <laughs> Son of a bitch! Now the game beams us back to the Enterprise in order to start all over again. Well, at least I still have all the items I collected. Okay, let's beam back down and collect this secret eye that everyone is talking about. Alright guys, move aside so I can see this thing. Now we head off to the secret temple that's full of treasures, crazy pictures, and... Fucking booby traps? Aw, oh, you suck! Well, it turns out that these pictures on the floor must be walked on in the same order they appear in in the previous rooms. So make sure to keep that pen and paper nearby. I don't need no stinking paper. My memory is sharp as a tack. Well, it's at least smart as a whip. A dull pair of scissors? Ah! Well, if you do manage to get past this part, then a fresh supply of dilithium crystals will be waiting for you at the end. Oh, come on, Spock. We're only taking one? Fuck that, I'm the captain! I say we take them all! Let's get the hell out of here! And none too soon. We'll just head over to the planet called Kappa. Alright, time to find us some hot green skinned babes! Woohoohoo! Hey baby, come here often. And we're off! Gosh damn it, let's just beam down to the surface. Temperature varies between 290 degrees. Forget that shit, I don't feel like nuking my balls off today. Well, let's just try this planet. Anna, Panna, Dana, uh, 
Whatever the hell this is. Atmosphere gaseous and unstable? Oh, come on! And they can't even spell gaseous right! Wow, dude, you're worse at this than a Ferengi in a TARD killing contest! <laughs> Why, you little... <laughs> hey, what the... Whoa! <coughs> Where the hell am I? <coughs> oh, well, time to find me a titty bar! <coughs> All right, well, third time's a charm. Let's go to Lykios, Warp 9! And once we're here, Scotty tells us that the crystals we previously collected aren't worth shit, and we need to go get new ones. It's also the time that Spock tells us that, coincidentally, we can find some on the planet below. Good work, Spock! You'll make lieutenant for this. What the hell are you doing? Ugh, enough of these shenanigans. Time to beam down and get our dilithium. But better make sure to bring a geologist, or you'll end up missing this valuable mineral that helps move this robot out of our way. Are you gonna move? How the hell with this? Let's Zelda this bitch. Now we come to a door that Spock tells us is in desperate need of some blasting. Alright, about time we get to blow some shit up. The hell's this door made of? Astonium? Well, if you're thinking, hey, this must be another puzzle, then you'd be right. Another damn puzzle? I know, what a bitch. Ugh. And the trick here is to have your security officer in the landing party so he can help you shoot the door open. Success! Now let's head over to this room, and big surprise, the red shirt guy dies. Well, after getting the dilithium off this planet, we now cross into enemy territory in order to reach home. Holy shit, a Romulan warbird! Holy shit, red alert! Now what the hell is this about? I shouldn't go to red alert? You and your stupid logic? Well, forget it, buddy. We're going to red alert! And now I got my ass handed back to me? Oh, damn it. Well, if I would have listened to Spock in the first place, I would have been able to reason with the Romulans, and I would have got escorted to my next destination unharmed. But I didn't. And now I've been drummed out of Starfleet. Son of a bitch. Well, nothing a long-ass password can't solve. And now we're at our next destination, which involves more running, puzzle solving, and a seductive green-skinned hottie? All right. Give me some privacy here, fellas. Also in this level, you'll meet up with celebrities like The Gorn, Harry Mudd, Mr. Clean, and the comedic stylings of Jamie Farr. So at last we arrive at the planet we were at in the beginning of the game when this whole anomaly crap started. And now it's time to beam down and survey the area. Even though it does look like someone tried lighting their own farts on fire, this explosion was actually caused by some idiot in Starfleet who left their communicator behind, causing the inhabitants to find it, causing a huge explosion. Who's the jackass who's stupid enough to lose his communicator? So now it's time to take the entire ship back in time and alter history so that this tragic event never happened. All right, Mr. Spock, slingshot us around the sun. Oh, jeez, here we go again. What the hell's this game rated anyway? Come on, Spock. After beaming down, we find this city intact. Now it's time to find that communicator. Need to use the phone? Well, you'll need some coins. Found the coins? Now you'll need a number to call. Found the number to call? Well, you'll now have to become part of a mob boss crime syndicate, then lie to them in order to get information from them, and then gamble with criminal masterminds by using counterfeit money that you stole from two guys that you ended up killing. And you did all this in order to get your communicator back. Of course, this is okay, while killing animals on foreign planets is prohibited by Starfleet law. Wow, just... wow. 
So in order to win this illegal poker game, we'll need to cheat with this rigged card deck. Alright, I won! Now we get the communicator back, and the game is won. Well, thank God that's over. Mr. Sulu, take us the hell out of here. Where the hell are we? Mr. Sulu! Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Yes! Yes! After so long! <laughs> this is fun, isn't it? Yes, this is exactly what I've been waiting for. Yes. Destroy. I will destroy. Master, what is wrong? I just got your message. I'm afraid that this great evil that I have foreseen is upon us now. Everything that we have been planning must be executed post haste. I understand. I will leave at once. Now it is time for us to reveal ourselves! Oh, welcome back, gamers. Well, I'm in a 90s mood today, so let's check out some Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Upon starting, we see the evil Rita appear over the horizon, and, well, that's basically it. There's no story, no mission, nothing. Way to drop the ball, Bandai. This is a Super Nintendo, where we now have enough room inside the cartridge to add a decent storyline to the gameplay. Boy, we're off to a great start. At the select screen, we get to choose our Power Ranger. And there's the leader of the group, Jason, Yellow Ranger Trini, the damsel in distress, Kimberly, the effervescent dork, Billy. Dear God, even his moves look dorky. Zack with his parachute pants and breakdancing dropkicks. And at last we have, uh... What the hell? Where's Tommy? This game doesn't have the Green Ranger? How the hell did that happen? It's not like he came into the show in the second or third season. He came in the middle of the first season, episode 17! So does that mean that Bandai produced this game so quickly that they slapped it together at a record pace? Good God, we're already off to a shit-tastic start. So after picking our ranger, we get to fight bad guys in our street clothes. Oh, come on. I'm being bombarded here with bad guys. Isn't that going to be some cause for concern? This makes as much sense as peeing into a radiator. And of course, while I'm busy debating the philosophy of how poorly this game was constructed, I'm getting my ass pulverized into a putty platter. It's only after reaching the middle of this stage that you meet up with the stage boss and you decide, hey, maybe the shit is starting to hit the fan here. And you finally morph into a Power Ranger. Man, if I wasn't having so much fun slicing up bad guys with this big-ass sword, I'd be flipping my shit right about now. And check this out. If things get too crazy for you, you now have a special attack you can use. Whether it be your powerful fists, an ice storm, rock storm, sparkly construction paper storm, or, uh... What the hell was that? Would she kill him with an explosive fart? <laughs> so if you haven't gathered by now, this is basically a beat-em-up brawler game. And of course, all you'll be doing in this game is fighting, fighting, and fighting some more. Good lord, can't we get some variety here? Great, right, Power Rangers destroying public property. Can't wait to see that scandal pop up on TMZ. So at last, we arrive at the stage boss. And this guy is pretty easily defeated. Or is he? Oh, oh, let me try. I can defeat any skeleton in any game. Okay, go for it. Okay, let's see here. We'll jump and... Oh, that's not supposed to happen. Oh, oh goodness. Ah, oh, no. Oh, ah, jeez. Must have been a fluke. Is this thing even plugged in properly? Damn it, Ryan, just give me that. You're going to break it. Oh, oh, all this gameplay has made me hungry. I'm going to go get me some Big League Chew. After defeating this bag of bones, it's time for level two. Holy crap, what the hell's with all the bad guys? I feel like I'm in a 1990s Batman movie all of a sudden. At least halfway through this stage, we do get a change of pace with some platform gaming. All this is pretty cool, until all this flaming shit rains down on you from the ceiling. Well, I guess it's not as bad as level 4, where you have to dodge these spiky enemies and iron pylons crashing down from above. What the hell? Did I just walk into a Looney Tunes cartoon? At the end of this level, we come to this stage boss, 
A Viking janitor elf? Boy, this guy warps around worse than that tiger guy in the game Punch-Out. Get back here and magically kiss my ass! Come on, how am I supposed to defeat this guy? Well, why don't you just try punching into the air there, neighbor? Oh yeah, like that's gonna work. How the hell did that work? And what the hell are you doing in my house? Well, I just stopped by to give you this extra fish I got. Okay, you know what? I'm a little busy right now. So take your fence, take your fish, and get the hell out of here. Now it's on to stage three, where you can swim around like an idiot until you get stabbed to death. Just like at the YMCA. And if you're able to survive your ass beating, then you'll be able to face off against one of the most iconic villains from the entire show. The eyeball creature thingy thing. By the end of this battle, you'll be reducing him to nothing but a floating eyeball thing that could use some visine. Wow. Now it's on to level five, where we head into the laboratory of Holy shit! You see how close I was to getting my ass blasted off? And I need that thing for pooping. Whoa, that was close. Tony, how the hell you guys keep getting in my house? Uh, the front door's open. Well, go close it and throw your ass out while you're at it! Ugh. So after fighting your way through all five of these levels, it's time to fry some bigger fish. Time to use the Ultra Megazord in an all-out brawl to the best that a 16-bit console can do. Now this is just like the show, beating down monsters, saving the day, and... No! No! This isn't how the show goes! Ah! Ah! God, this monster's tough. But luckily, I am able to squeak out a victory. Hopefully the last boss in this game isn't too hard. Haha! <laughs> Wow, I killed him already? This guy went down without me even breaking a sweat. Oh, what the hell is this Dragon Ball Z Super Saiyan shit? Turning colors and getting more powerful than before? Ah, oh, you suck! Ah! Oh, whoa! I didn't do it! And even if you manage to win, you end up getting the lamest ending ever. The Power Rangers go back to the soda shop, to watch Zack breakdance. Are you seriously kidding me? How in fucking God's name is this a good ending? We saw him breakdancing his way throughout the entire game. What is this, a Dancing with the Stars audition? Boy, I've had enough. I'm gonna smash you into a million pieces. We interrupt this review to bring you this special news bulletin. Good afternoon, people. I'm Johnny Newscaster. This is the news. What the heck? A large robot is destroying the downtown area at this very moment. Destroy. I will destroy. Hail Shadow Overlord. There's no word on what he wants just yet, but... Oh, and I just got word that the X-Men have arrived on the scene, so let's go live there now. All right, X-Men, it's up to us. Fall in! Cyclops. Wolverine. Ah. Nightcrawler, Colossus, Iceman, and Storm. Destroy. All right, monster, surrender now or face the X-Men. Destroy. Oh my God, this is horrible. Well, maybe the first to surrender my allegiances to this Shadow Overlord. Welcome to our fair city. The X-Men are dead? I kind of dug that Storm check too. Greetings, Irate Gamer. You again? You must come with me. The fate of the world is at hand. Well, where are we going? To meet up with your friends. Hello, everybody. Jason David Frank, and we're here at Wizard World in Ohio, and I want to thank you for watching. I've traveled many miles to give this to you. I call upon the Inferno Force! It won't be long now until he masters the power of Inferno. Just wanted to inform you that our master plan is ready for execution. What a poor excuse for a game. The world will finally fear the name Shadow Overlord. Destroy. I'm afraid that this great evil is upon us now. A large robot is destroying the downtown area at this very moment. 
must come with me. The fate of the world is at hand. Well, where are we going? To meet up with your friends. doing here? Well, I know. Oh, 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 did anyone else here just step out of the shower too? Oh, how embarrassing. Well, this is weird. How'd we all get here? You are all here because of me. Whoa, whoa, who's that? Whoa, that's the wisest sage of them all. Correct. I am the sage elder. I have brought you and your friends here to throw out the evil shadow overlord. Only you and your motley crew of heroes have the power to save your fair city from the terror that now wreaks havoc upon it. Well, well, I guess I did amount to something after all. Take that, mother! Well, this sounds like something right out of the Power Rangers. Quiet, you. You want to get us all sued? Whoa! So does that mean we get to fight in big robots, too? Yes, but unfortunately, I do not possess the full capacity to power them. Only the irate gamer is capable of accomplishing such a feat. Me? How the hell am I supposed to do that? By using the power of Inferno. Oh yeah, that crazy power I've been tapping into lately. Heck, it's been a couple episodes, so I kind of forget about it. And all of your training and irate gaming has led up to this very moment. I'm afraid time is of the essence. Only by reviewing another game can you power up the Battle Zords so you can fight back and save the city from total annihilation. Destroy. Smash. Destroy. Well, I'm getting the hell out of here. Ugh. My car! You bastard! Oh, oh, this is terrible! So you're saying all I have to do to save the city is review another game? Correct. Well, if that's what it takes, then let's do this. Time to review Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Sega Genesis. It's a good thing I had this in my back pocket. Wait a minute. It was you who kept smacking me in the head with all those games. Not quite, you. <laughs> Let's get down to business. I've got a world to save. Yeah! Yeah! Welcome to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Sega Genesis, which is a lamer version of the one created for the Super Nintendo. Instead of being able to run around in various levels like the SNES version, this turns out to be a brawling game where your mission is to beat one bad guy per stage. Well, what the frickin' do? This sounds lame already. Well, at least we have a storyline in this version, which involves the evil Rita cooking up some bad guys to destroy Earth. After that plays out, you get to pick your Power Ranger to fight against your first bad guy. Interestingly enough, all you pretty much have to do is smack him around a bit, and you'll end up winning. That was a bit too easy. Let's just try this second battle and see what happens. And this idiot didn't even land a punch. What kind of lame ass game is this? How can you call this a fight when the opponent doesn't even land a punch? Boy, if this isn't a shit burger starting to stink. Well, in order to stay true to the TV show, the third fight in this game is with the Green Ranger Tommy, a character the Super Nintendo version seemed to lack. Now, if you're hoping this game will rival a fighting game like Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter, then you're severely hoping for a plasma TV when all you have in front of you to watch is a turd in a box. Each fighter does have their own special attacks you can perform by mashing in a series of buttons. But why even bother? Because this game is so boring that it can cause you to slip into a comatose-like state without warning. Should I get him some water? You need some water? I'll get him some water. In every single way, this game is totally underwhelming. It's like being a sports coach and realizing your teammates switched out the Gator Egg jug with Gator Piss. You bastards. God, this game sucks so bad that I wish a real fighter would come in and kick some ass around here. Get over here! Scorpion wins fatality. After your fight with the Green Ranger, the Red Ranger Jason tells him to open his eyes and they magically become best friends? Son of a bitch. Talk about a master negotiator who knew Jason was such a wordsmith. As a bonus, you can now pick Tommy in the character roster select screen. Look at that. Hope the game cartridge doesn't blow up with all the epicness this game now contains.
Yeah, that's what I thought. Still sucks. Towards the end of this game, we finally come to Goldar, Rita's right-hand man. Whoa, and we finally get a challenge around here. Well, let's just see how the Pink Ranger fares in this fight. Well, that went about how I expected. Time to wake up, sweetheart. Stop flirting with Tommy and worrying about if he got the role on Felicity. And we all know she did. What? So after only eight rounds of fighting, you managed to arrive at the final stage in this game. Wait a minute. Did I just say there are only eight measly rounds in this game? Oh, for crying out loud. Eight rounds of shit! Good lord, would it have killed the game developers to add some extra levels in here? We're not really doing anything besides fighting in this game. Just look at who the final boss is here. The same asshole from the Super Nintendo game. Thanks for shaking things up for the Genesis version, guys. No, I wasn't looking to fight someone like Rita at the end of this game anyway. Well, at least the ending of this game is halfway decent. Here we have all the Zords forming up together to destroy Rita's castle. Hey, when you're done with that, go on over and destroy the makers of this game. I think I saw them in the bathroom trying to flush out another piece of crap. <sighs> Alright, you piece of Look! The power meter's full! Sweet, finally! Excellent! Finally the time is at hand to unleash your power! Alright, it's go time. You sure? Oh yeah, I'm sure. Oh, oh, this is gonna be great! Let's do this! Alright guys, it's morphin' time! Right! Tyrannosaurus! Triceratops! Mastodon! Sabertooth Tiger! Uh... Oh damn, I'm the Pink Ranger? I'm uh, Pterodactyl. Locked and loaded. Looking good. Ready over here. All systems go. Good lord, what the hell do all these buttons do? Destroy. Destroy. Guys, this isn't working. Time to come together. All, All right, right, power out. Alright guys, let's show them what we're made of. Right! Yeah, we got him! Alright! Uh-oh, I think we just made him angry. Destroy! Oh my god, I think I swallowed a filling! He's killing us! I know, he's just too strong! We're gonna have to summon the Sword of Inferno if we want to beat him! But our power meter is almost empty! Ah crap, I don't have enough power to summon the sword! I need to review another game! Are you crazy? We don't have time for that! Right, and he just won't wait around until we've powered up! Tell me something I don't know, guys! Victory! Well, we better do something quick, because he's coming for us. Master, they're in trouble. I see that, and we must now pray for a miracle. Ah, oh, crap! We're doomed! Victory! The world will finally fear the name Shadow Overlord. Destroy. I'm afraid that this great evil is upon us now. A large robot is destroying the downtown area at this very moment. Whoa, whoa, who's that? I am the Sage Elder. Only by reviewing another game can you power up the battle swords. All right, guys, let's show them what we're made of. Right!
victory. Master, they're in trouble. I see that. And we must now pray for a miracle. Ah, crap! We're doomed! Perhaps I can be of some assistance. The genie. The one and only. Tell you what, I'll keep him occupied long enough so you can review another game. Oh man, you're a lifesaver, genie. Good idea. Victory. Godspeed, gentlemen. Hey, ugly, I'm over here. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm over here. <laughs> you are too much. All right, guys, I'm going to do this as fast as I can. If you're looking for the ultimate Power Rangers game, then it's time we turn to the Sega CD. Because this version gives us actual scenes from the show to give us the ultimate Power Rangers experience. Awesome. Welcome, humans. So who are you? Of course, when it's finally time to play the game, the fight scenes from the TV show are overlaid with control pad buttons that you need to press as they appear. Block, kick, block, seems simple enough. Block, attack, I mean block, damn it, shit! And there goes my health meter. Are you feeling pissed off yet? I'm just getting started. After a few battles in this game, you'll finally reach that show-altering Green Ranger story. And this game does a great job at covering all the highlights. Megazord vs. Tommy, Jason vs. Tommy, Megazord vs. Giant Tommy... Uh, yeah, I never understood how that made sense either. But it was in the TV show, so they did include it here. But once the Green Ranger makes friends with the other Power Rangers, you end up coming to this crap. In order to play the rest of this game, we must switch over to the Intermediate Mode. Ah, oh, shit. If you've ever seen any of my past reviews, you know this is always a toss-up. Son of a bitch. I'm back at the beginning of the game. It took me 24 minutes to play through an entire area I already beat. I don't want to play through this again. Good lord, you don't see Mario pulling this kind of shit. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. F*** you, Toadstool! So this intermediate part of the game covers a story where the Green Ranger loses his powers from that damn green candle. It's also the point where the game makes you now perform two button combo attacks in succession with giving you less response time than before. Damn it. Ugh. I'm terrible at this. Continue? Yeah, right. I want to continue this game even if the world was at stake. Um... Oh yeah, it is. Alright, well next up is this Dragon Zord fight. Damn it! Come on! Shit! Yeah, I'm getting my ass beat over here. Oh, yeah. oh, shut the hell up, Rita. Well, at least I reached the end of the level. Can't wait to see what happens now. Son of an ass biter, now I gotta play through the expert mode? Don't tell me they're gonna send me all the way back to the... And they just did. Motherfucker! Well, it's a good thing I'm already dead. And of course, in the expert mode, you don't get the luxury of playing through the story where the White Ranger shows up. Instead, you get to play the story where the Power Rangers get to face off against their deadly nightmares. Playing this game is like eating a cake you find out is a urinal cake. Who the hell picked this episode thinking this would be a great way to finish the game? Hurry it up, guys. I'm getting a little tired here. When you finally play this game in expert mode, boy, you better be prepared for a shit storm of epic proportions to roll through your living room because your response time in hitting a button is reduced to a fraction of a millisecond of that millisecond. Ten seconds? It took me ten seconds to die? What the hell is this shit? So of course the only way to defeat this part of the game is by sitting in front of your TV hours on end, sacrificing every shred of free time in your personal life in order to reach the final encounter you have with Rita. For a task this monumental, I better get one hell of an ending. More phenomenal? Son of a bitch. I have a dozen words floating around my mind of what I think this ending is, and more phenomenal is far from fucking one of them! Why are you on a- Look! Oh, feeling fatigue. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm down for the count. I can't do this no more. Ugh. Oh no, the genie's down for the count. Oh crap. Not to worry guys, our meter is at full capacity. All right, let's end this once and for all guys. Right. <laughs> Time to summon the Sword of Inferno. Wait a minute, phone. Damn it, 
call him up now! Now we're gonna send this robot back to hell where he came from! Right! No, don't hurt me! Goodbye, robot! Destroy him! Do it! No, don't hurt me! Good job, guys. More phenomenal. Really? Oh, yeah. No! You two have failed me again! Well, we did give it a good go, right? Enough! I don't want to hear another word! You two will rule a day, that you! Well, um, you want to get some pizza? Sure. After a long and intense confrontation, the day is saved and the robot has been destroyed. And it's all thanks to five men who put their lives on the line. And those five courageous men are the Power Rangers. Aw, oh, you big idiot, that was us, the Irate Gamer Team! Well, at least we saved the day, right? Yeah, I guess so. Now then, you've all proven yourselves worthy and overcame the evil that was the Shadow Overlord. More phenomenal! Are you really gonna keep saying that? Oh yeah. <sighs> Rejoice, my friends. I have great respect for all of you. Oh, oh, I get so emotional at times like these. Go now, and I shall call upon you again when evil returns. Well, now what do we do? Well, we keep doing what we've always done. Keep reviewing. Thanks, Rob. We off the air, we gotta take a leap. Alright, finally got the damn place cleaned up around here. Oh damn it! Season 5 of the Eric Gamer Show is perhaps my favorite out of all the seasons, and I can't tell you how many man hours went into actually bringing that season to life. Let's show them what we're made of. Right! What really makes it pop for me is that it's done in an episodic format where it continues from episode to episode to episode. And uh, at first I didn't think there would be 12 episodes that made up the entire storyline. Turn on the news, something crazy is happening downtown. But the story evolved in such a way where, yeah, it took 12 episodes just to tell that particular story. When I first sat down and started working on the first episode of season four, I had just gotten an HD camera and I was starting to do stuff in HD and it gave you a better picture, gave you better quality and all that stuff. And uh, for a while I wanted to do an episodic type format where things just continued from one episode to the next. And around that time, uh, I was watching some great shows like Dexter, True Blood, you know, all these shows that continued from episode to episode. And I thought, you know, if I wanted to do the same type of thing, now would be the best time. I was starting to do things in HD, I had upgraded to a new editing software system, and I was able to do that much more with my videos. It seemed like the sky was the limit. So uh, I was like, let's do this. That's weird. Why is there a teddy bear sitting here? I originally thought that this whole story arc would only be six episodes long, but you know, once I started getting into the story and fleshing it out, uh, it appeared, yeah, it would be a lot longer. Uh, when you do something for that long, it's like juggling. You gotta keep the balls flinging up into the air to keep the story going. It was like, okay, well, let's see how long I can draw the first part of the story out. And once I got to the next portion, of the story, I was like, okay, let's draw this out a little bit more. So, yeah, it was a juggling act the entire way. Well, I think it's time for my medication. As far as the storyline goes, I wanted something that was epic, something that would really make it a life or death type of situation that I wanted to put the irate gamer in. And I knew from the beginning the end game 
would be putting him and uh, four of his friends in the Power Rangers vehicles. Now all I needed was, okay, how do we build up to that point? And first of all, I knew, okay, we, we gotta build up the bad guy side of the playing field. And the first guy, of course, is the evil gamer, which I had built up in subsequent episodes. I'll infiltrate Ira Gamer's house and steal his one-of-a-kind enhanced Magnavox Odyssey. And for a while before that uh, first episode, uh, I had toyed around with the idea of, of a shadow-like guy uh, inside of a mirror. I thought that was a great idea. But with this episode, I thought, what if the evil gamer has somebody that he takes orders from? Like his boss, his superior. And I thought this was just a, a great character to be that person. Bah! So hard to find good minions these days. And then I thought, okay, who could the third villain be? And uh, the only thing I could think of was the Odyssey from the History of Video Game series that I did. And he was based on the character from the 2001 Odyssey movie. And I thought, well, why don't we take him and actually put him in a body so he can walk around and interact with the other characters? And so I, I for the first episode, I built a storyline based on, okay, let's do just that. Hello, Dave. And I always liked these three villains interacting with each other because there was a kind of Three Stooges type feel to them. You two have failed me again! Well, we did give it a good go, right? Enough! Now, on the other hand, picking the 7-Up game for the first episode, uh, it's funny because I actually picked this game because uh, I knew at the very end of this game, uh, you have that little picture where it says, take a picture of the screen and send it in to receive a prize. Well, nobody knows what this prize is, and I thought, huh, I can work with this and make this a, a joke. So yeah, that whole game was picked uh, just so I could make a joke on the end. And I thought, you know, what better thing to get in the mail than a box of uh, all the games that they couldn't sell originally uh, back in the day. No, no, no! But choosing the 7-Up game was kind of a blessing in disguise too because it allowed me to bring back uh, the Kool-Aid Man. Oh yeah! And with this season, I really wanted to bring back all the characters that had appeared in the past three seasons. This was going to be pretty much a group effort. You know, I would kind of be the main player in this season, but I wanted all these supporting characters to kind of interact around me because, of course, I was building up to the Megazord fight. I just, at that time, I didn't know who the, the five people would be in the Battle Zords. I knew, okay, yeah, the Ira Gamer's gonna be there, but who are the other four gonna be? So this whole time I'm thinking, okay, let's just play with all these characters, see how the story flows, and when the time comes, we'll just pick, okay, we'll pick him, 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 and him. And uh, so at the time, yeah, I kept throwing in characters like Wilkins, Wise Sage, Tony, and they started appearing in the first couple of episodes. So that's exactly why. For the second episode, I wanted the stakes to be raised a little bit more because on one side you have the villains ramping up their scheme and making these new clones and sending them out to the uh, into the public, and then on the Irate Gamer side you have his friends coming over and taking Rob the Robot and making him good. And fitting him with the scheme of bringing back people from the last three seasons and putting them into this season. Rob fit right into that. Rob the robot! Yeah, that cool? I found them all broken in your closet and fixed them for you. And at some point down the line, I thought, why don't I just bring back Rob the robot with RoboCop? Because their names are so close alike. And that's why I, I made the moniker RoboCop. I mean, it just flowed so well. Hmm, RoboCop? RoboCop. Funny how that works out and he was able to go out and defeat the evil guys and the day was saved. So it was kind of nice because we got to see more of the city. Of course, doing the downtown city area scene was a lot of work because I had to dress up in different outfits and uh, just keep running across the camera over and over again. And doing the work of the cronies is a lot of work too because you have a mask over your head and you're doing all this work in front of the lights so, yeah, I was sweating my ass off 
kind of a lot when I was doing those parts. Of course, that whole section of the video was entirely green screen, but uh, yeah, I think it came off pretty well. So when we got to the He-Man part of the storyline, there are certain things I needed to put in place. And of course, I knew the end game of the Megazord battle. Uh, there are certain elements that I just, that weren't in place yet. Uh, people like Zordon. I needed a character that could summon these robots and, and summon Chris into this world. Hey Rob, check out this new sword I got. And to further the plot, I came up with this thing called the Inferno Force, which when the Irish Gamer calls upon it, he's got these certain powers. I have the power! So that was an element where I thought, okay, if we introduce this, we can kind of spend a couple episodes of him summoning the Inferno Force and, and learning to control it. And I thought that was fun. So that took a couple episodes. Hey neighbor, you have a cup of sugar I could Never mind. And I chose He-Man because it was a nice vehicle for the Inferno Force to be played out. He could summon it with the sword, and of course, as you know, He-Man summons the power of Eternia through his sword. All right, BattleBot, let's try this again. And of course, the story with the Inferno Force just spilled over into the Silver Surfer episode, which was a review I've been wanting to do for a very long time. What? It was nice to tie in the Inferno Force thing so the Ira Gamer could summon a surfboard, go into the game, and destroy it from the inside out. Uh, I've always envisioned my review of the Silver Surfer that way, and it was nice enough now that you know I was using a software program where I could pull it off. And a lot of this was done by taking images of the actual level and then using camera image manipulation to make it look like I was flying down a corridor. Yeah, it just took a lot of time and a lot of work. I'm kind of glad I waited because if I had done that, you know, years prior when I wanted to first initially do the episode, I wouldn't have been able to visually give that justice. So I thought it was a great idea to kind of sidestep away from the whole Shadow Overlord story just a little bit to focus on the Inferno Force part of the storyline because when you get to the main storyline, all this stuff comes together in a way where it's like, oh, okay, this is how this all interlinks. Whew, well, I feel better. Iceman, need a refill. When we get to the X-Men part of the story, uh, the Arrow Gamer pretty much has control over this Inferno Force. And uh, so that part of the story was kind of done. Playing all six X-Men from the NES video game was a lot of fun. Very time consuming, I must say, because I had to you know, put wigs on and all this other stuff, but uh, that played out very well. And I, I loved destroying uh, pretty much each X-Men in their own unique way. Oh my god, fine. And of course, by the end of the episode, we see the evil gamer and the shadow overlord on the verge of creating this huge monster that's just gonna storm the city and wreak all this havoc in the show. Time to get evil. <laughs> of course, the next three episodes that I did, I kind of stayed away from the whole shadow overlord storyline. Uh, for a while because uh, in my mind I thought well you know the robots being built it's gonna take some time so let's just you know for the next couple episodes let me just do normal reviews Come and uh, I think those were some very strong episodes I mean I did a Star Trek episode where uh, you know there was a cutscene where I did stuff with a lieutenant drunkard on the bridge <laughs> well, <I do> <laughs> hey what the I did a diehard thing running gag with uh, Carl, who shows up in the video game all the time. Not you, Carl, the other Carl! Get off this line! And of course, with the G.I. Joe episode, I had to do an homage with Flint, because in the cartoon, always at the end, they'd always do a, I think they're called a PSA, where he'd show up at the end and, and be like, kids, don't do drugs, or don't do this, or don't do that. So of course, I had to do an homage to that, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Damn it, Flint, get the hell out of here! <laughs> now with episode 10, we finally reach 
the Power Rangers episode. And if you watch it, there's a lot of cameos because at this point I was still thinking, okay, who are going to be the four other people besides me in the Battle Swords? And uh, there were certain points in time where I thought, okay, you know, Genie will be one of them, or uh, Joey will be one of them, or Rob the Robot. But I, I still was on the fence. I was like, okay, who who is it going to be? Who is it going to be? And, and I guess it wasn't until episode 11 with the second half of the Power Rangers where I was like, okay, it's going to be these five guys. Well, I know. Oh, 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 did anyone else here just step out of the shower too? Oh, how embarrassing. So in the first part of the Power Rangers episode, yeah, uh, it was just a ramping up of all these things. And to be honest, when I first was starting to write the script, I had planned on the Power Rangers reviewing all these three games uh, being one episode. But, uh, you know, once I wrote that first half, uh, I was like, oh my gosh, I've got so many pages here. Uh, usually a review is about one and a half, uh, two pages long. I, I, was saying, I was staring at seven pages. So I was like, okay, this has got to be cut into two or three separate episodes. And that's ultimately what ended up happening. So when we get to part two, yeah, we see all, all the characters on the sidelines coming together and being like, okay, we're all here for a reason. Let's power up those battle swords and fight the good fight. All right, guys, this isn't working. Time to come together. All, all right, right, power up. And of course, since I was playing like 50,000 parts, uh, it was getting kind of hectic on my side and a very, very time consuming. Um, I think that's, you know, in my own mind, I guess that I feel that it's a charm of my show. It's just like with South Park. They do most of the voices of the characters on the show. And I'm like, well, you know, I'll do the same for mine. So it's, it's kind of my way of doing things. Let's get down to business. I've got a world to save. Yeah! Yeah! Of course, also too, when we get to this part of the episode, every single scene that I am in has to be green screen. There's just no way of getting around it because you're in the Power Rangers headquarters and then we transfer from there over to the uh, Megazords. So everything was green screened and it took a lot of time for me to, to cut out all these backgrounds and make it look like we're in the vehicles, we're in the Megazord, we're here, we're there. But for all intents and purposes, I think this episode was executed very well. Uh, for a while, it was touch and go there because I was like, okay, how am I going to do this fight scene? How is this going to play out? And when I was looking for scenes for the Power Rangers, um, I went through the first, I think, 40 episodes and pulled out every battle sword scene and, and thought, okay, can I use this? Can I use this? And from there, I was able to create a story that way where I was like, okay, the battle sword can fall here, the big robot attacks here, uh, this goes into that. And the story was crafted from the bits and pieces that I pulled from the show. Time to summon the Sword of Inferno! The final scene, the ending sequence uh, of part three, took a long time. And uh, I had it rummaging around in my head for a few months. I'm like, okay, how can I do this? Who should show up? I want cameos. Who should be there? You know, whatever. And, uh, of course, somebody that we haven't seen for a while was the angel and the devil on the shoulders from the Indiana Jones episode. And I also do, wanted to do a series of gags that only fans of the show would really pick up on. Uh, stuff like Carl. Damn it, Carl, not now! And when I did the crowd scene, I wanted the same thing. You'd, you'd see just a, a cavalcade of people from the past three seasons show up. Kool-Aid Man, the Hulk guy, the Dr. Mario virus sprites, Hubert, Goro, the Noid, Aladdin, Mayor McCheese and Captain Crook, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Lakitu, the Forest Goblin, Duck Hunt Dog, Eggplant Wizard, Ronnie's brother, and of course I threw in just, you know, stupid stuff like a guy cheering so hard that he has a heart attack. And there are a bunch of other people that I put into the crowd scene that I've had interactions with. Uh, while I have done the Irate Gamer show. But it was kind of cool to bring them all together for the ending scene and just really play it out. And interesting to note here, uh, the, the part with the X-Men in Heaven, uh, this wasn't originally in the script. I was like, well, let me put Cyclops in the crowd and, and put a halo over his head. So after I filmed this part, I was like, oh, let me put Storm's wig on and, and put Storm in the scene. And uh, before you knew it, I, I started doing all the X-Men and I'm like, 
you know, it'd be kind of stupid to put him randomly in the crowd. Why don't I just put him in heaven? That would be funny in itself. So that's how that whole thing developed. And I love when ideas like that come together because it does make the show that much richer. It's like a serendipitous meshing of events. It's like the RoboCop, RoboCop thing. Or the He-Man, Inferno Force, Power, you know, putting those together. And it makes the show that much better, in my opinion. No! Ah, shit! I spent a lot of time thinking about how I should wrap up this whole story. And uh, I think it came together very well. Of course, I wanted the Shadow Overlord to be crushed by his own creation. I thought that was a, a great ultimate demise of him. You two will rule the day, not you! Well, um, you wanna get some pizza? Sure. And of course, at the very, very end, after the credits ran, I wanted to have Satan just cleaning up hell, and of course, you see the big mountain of Aladdin sprites in the background that fell down there in the Aladdin episode. But I just wanted him to be cleaning up hell, and then, boom, the bottom half of the robot falls into hell because earlier in the episode Chris says now we're gonna send this robot back to hell where it came from and yeah they did so I don't know if anybody caught that but that's exactly how that came to be oh damn it I, I was really proud of the ending and I couldn't ask for it to play out any better and I just wish I could have done this all in the course of a year but of course you know Time and, and personal life and all that stuff kind of spread that out just a little bit but uh, it's done and uh, a lot of people gave me feedback and said man that was the best ending ever I loved it and yeah that I, I'm just so glad to get that kind of a feedback for something that took me so long to create and put together so um, yeah I, I couldn't be happier thanks Rob <laughs>